Hi everybody, welcome to yet another video. So today we're having a look at the NVE in a 1.3. Now it's a Chinese spray gun and it's a loose interpretation of the Devilbis DV1. It looks very, very similar. Uh, it, it, it's not, it's heavier than the original gun. There's quite a few differences in it. Uh, looks is probably the thing that is most similar in, but it, it's actually made quite differently. But I'll put a link in the description. At the bottom of the video, you'll get a description. And I'll put a link in there, and it, it will uh, take you to a video I did of an unboxing where we physically compare some of the components and you get a bit of a better idea of of what it's about and what it isn't really so today we're looking at the how how well this thing sprays so the first thing i thought when i when i did this uh video or you know uh, sprayed with this gun uh is it's actually not that bad at all really um and it it it, it pains me a little to say that because I'm one of those people I've avoided doing um, videos on like Chinese copies of guns for quite a while because I just didn't think it was quite right. Uh, but other people have, have, have done them and a lot of people ask me to do them. So, you know, I've joined the club basically and I, I am doing them. So bear in mind as I, as I said at the start you're getting something that's a loose interpretation of a dv1 but i have to say it actually doesn't spray too bad at all um it's not as rewarding for the painter it feels and again i mentioned this in the unboxing video it actually feels a lot more heavier than the difference is uh, from memory i think the difference is about 40 grams something like that which is around about an ounce or something but it feels quite a bit heavier than the original gun in the hand uh if you can forgive that which most people will be able to unless you're doing you know a lot of work repetitively uh in which case it will make your arm ache, especially with a, a full 600 milliliter pot or cup uh but you know, it's a bit heavier and it does notice it when you're wielding it around on bike stuff and things like that, which tend to be a bit more, um, a bit more intricate. So you need to get move the gun around a bit more. You do notice the, the extra weight. It just makes it more difficult for it to, for you to flick the gun, um, when you're actually spraying. But I was, I was quite, uh, surprised isn't the word. I was pleasantly pleased when I used this. Uh, because it does actually spray quite well when you you, you can see you'll see the pattern in a second it actually gives a very very good pattern um it, it's it's more of an i than an o uh but it, it's definitely different to the 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 devilbis uh SI, sorry gti pro light copy they do which is again a bit a, quite a big heavy gun but i found that quite quite coarse really because it, it's um, it gives you a very small wet pattern, which ideally I wouldn't mind, but I think that there, there's too much, when it's on full fluid, there's too much fluid going through the tip and it, it effectively overwhelms the amount of um, spray you're getting, if that makes sense. So the amount of air coming through uh, isn't enough for the amount of fluid coming through, but if you back it off a bit, it actually works okay. And exactly the same can be said for this, but to a lesser degree, because if you use this at, at full fluid you you will especially if you're inexperienced and i would suggest that a lot of people buying this may be inexperienced you will you will come unstuck not necessarily with the base coat uh but you you may well do with a clear coat particularly with motorcycle tanks and things like that because they are i find they're more intricate than a lot of uh, car panels because a lot of car panels are left to right left to right left to right or right to left i suppose but normally left to right left to right etc um with bike stuff there's a lot of overhang there's a lot of small crevices and the the if you overload these things the ability for for it to run and cause you problems is i think greater um so if you're using it on something like bike parts and that where you, you can't necessarily get loads and loads of speed because it, it's a bit too intricate to do that certainly back the fluid off that's what i did in this so the settings for this for the base coat uh i used it at two bar now i think the recommended settings and that's going to be loosely interpreted lo loosely interpreted on the original gun but this isn't 
quite like the original gun. So it, it, it's it's loosely recommended at around about two to two and a half bar. So I I used the, it on on for both clear coat and for base coat at two bar, and it seemed to work perfectly well at that. But I didn't use it on full fluid at all. I used it two out for the base coat. So the base coat you see now is the fluid done all the way in and then just backed out full two, full two, no, full two turns, two full turns. Uh, the problem, it's not really a problem, but it's more difficult to judge because there's no markings on the actual knob the knob that you turn out or in to adjust the fluid there's no marking on it so you can't sort of go one out or one in and know you're going to go back to the the setting you set it to before because there's no marking so you just have to judge or you can mark it you know get uh, a little hacksaw or something just put a little mark line on it anything to to give you a um some kind of bearing as to where you were before but i mean it's, it's quite minor that really most of the time you'll just you know adjust and and see what <coughs> sorry you'll just adjust and see what happens so as far as actually using the gun uh apart from the weight it actually it actually performs very very well i thought the atomization is pretty good and you will be able to knock the air air pressure up a little bit more if you wanted to it's it's quite hungry on air it's probably not as hungry as the original dv1 uh but it, but it is still quite hungry so if you're you know at home trying to use this gun you will need a reasonable air supply uh, and the same is the case with the the copy gti pro light and i will do a video putting these two together the copy gti pro light and this NVE because it's quite, I think it's quite interesting and will be quite an, uh, an eye opener. But I, I actually really enjoyed using this gun, and as I said at the start, it actually pains me to say it really. But I think for the, I think that's about 70 GB pounds, I think that includes taxes, etc., uh, to get into the UK. Uh, I don't think it's a bad, bad gun at all. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm narrating this now and I'm trying to flick through my head as to something. That I think that could possibly compare to it, uh, and I don't really know. I mean, you've got like the ANI F160, which I really like, but that's now about 110, 115 GB pounds. So, you, you, I can't really think of one that would come near this. I've, I've just ordered um, an Astro gun from the US, uh, which is a, a Taiwanese cheap cheap gun but it's supposed to be quite good a few people who watch the channel have recommended it to me so i have ordered one of those uh and if that comes through that was about 90 gb pounds and i might find that that's actually really good but certainly for the money for the 70 gb pounds i thought this was really good you see the base coat finish here it put a base coat on very very nice um i as i said i only had it two out believe it or not to get the fluid get full fluid if you turn it all the way in the needle still going back until you get to around about six turns out on the fluid so two out on the fluid for the base coat actually is is below what this gun can uh, well below what this gun can throw out the problem with these chinese guns and uh, i'm touched on it a bit with the gti pro light the problem with these guns i think with these chinese guns is they're made effectively generically so when i said at the start it's a loose copy it's not made like the original like the original gun so if you put these things on fl full fluid i think they get overwhelmed um it, there's just too much fluid coming out for the amount of air that's coming through the cap and yes you can turn the pattern up but the whole thing starts to get a, a bit um unruly then because you by turning the pressure up you will draw more fluid through uh, because it doesn't push the fluid through these gravity guns although they are gravity so the you know the material is at the top of the gun and will naturally come down they it's drawn out it isn't pushed out it's drawn out so the cap creates like a venturi effect so it it, it draws it through uh, and that's how they work so if you put the air pressure up on any of these guns you will normally get more material coming out and that seems to be the problem with these anyway, is that on full fluid, too much material comes out. It seems to overwhelm it. 
Uh, and I don't know whether it's because the air cap's not designed particularly well uh, or what, but using it at these settings, as I say, two out on the fluid for um, base coat, and I had it two and three quarters out for this part here, which is the clear coat. Uh, I was I was pre pleasantly su surprised. If I'd, I was going to say, if I'd paid seventy pound for this, if if I was somebody who had paid seventy pound for this at home. I would be very, very happy with it. Uh, and, you know, I've got loads and loads of different spray guns, so I'm not sitting here now thinking to myself, well, you know, this is one of the best guns I've got, because it isn't. By far, it isn't. Uh, but for £70, it's actually not a bad not a bad bet. I think in the US, you'll pay something like $77, because I know your tax system kicks in later than, uh, than ours on imports, as far as I know. Um, so you would actually get it even cheaper, uh, which would make it even more of a bargain, I would think, if you can overlook the fact that it is supposed to be a cof copy. Um, uh, you know, it, it's effectively taking someone else's design. But it, as I say, it, it's a, that much of a loose copy that I, I don't think you'd even... Um, uh, you know, a spray gun's going to look like a spray gun. So I doubt if they would get into trouble, even if, even if the Chinese were... Uh, um, had some kind of, of, of rule, if that makes sense, that uh, you couldn't copy things. Uh, temperature on this was 17 degrees Celsius, so I'm, I'm using a little bit of heat. Uh, the base coat was heated up to about 36 degrees Celsius, which is, what's that, about 100 Fahrenheit, something like that, a bit more maybe. Um, and the same with the clear coat as well. It just helps the clear coat run out more. It helps the base coat dry quicker. Uh, by putting a bit of heat into the object and some heat into the base coat, it helps it dry quicker. And if you can get the base coat dry quicker, then it means you'll get less nibs in the paint because the less time it's wet for, the less time you'll get problems. Because obviously, as soon as your paint dries, then you can give it a quick blow over before you put your clear coat on. And the same to a lesser extent goes for the clear coat. The quicker you can get the clear coat dry, the better. But there's a lot, lot more you have to think about with clear coat. If you're putting too too fast a hardener, etc., in there, you will expect some dieback, which is why when you see the stuff at the end here, the bit you see now is, is straight off the gum uh, about an hour afterwards. Normally, normally I've cleaned the gum uh, and then I, I, I take a video um, afterwards. And then the outside stuff you'll see in a minute is, a, a t what is it, two, two days, four hours I've got here. Two days, four hours afterwards. Um, so any, any initial dieback will, will be gone. And, and normally the rule of thumb is the fast, sorry, the slower the hardener you use, the less dieback you will get. But this is a U-Pole clear coat, a 2080. So it's my normal cheap clear coat that I use. Uh, gives reasonable results, and to be perfectly ha ha honest, I was really happy with this gun the way it perf the way it performed. As I say, I'm not going to sit here and say it was absolutely brilliant because it, it it wasn't, but it was it was it was a pretty admirable for for seventy pound. Uh, and if you genuinely can't afford the real thing, or you know something like a Kaiwami four or, or uh, W four hundred. Or something like that, second hand one at 150 quid or GTI Pro Lite, any of those good stalwart guns, then certainly something like this would, would fit the bill. Don't expect it to last as long because it simply won't. That seems to be the problem with all these Chinese guns. They don't seem to last the, the, the distance. But if you're only using it occasionally, as long as you clean it properly and dry it properly, um, each time you use it, you shouldn't have loads and loads of problems. But I, I wouldn't recommend it for the like the pro user because you just you, you'd well. I mean, I suppose you could have it for two, three weeks and throw it away, but that's not really the uh, best way to do it. I got as close as I could so that you could see the lack of peel. This isn't the colour that would really make this thing pop and reflect like mad because it just isn't. It's a rose gold colour, uh, but the colour is what it is, I guess. But uh, I mean, I was really, really happy with the results. Um, definitely, definitely worth, definitely worth the money. Even though it, it does, as I said, pains me to uh, say it. And and definitely, in my opinion, much better than the uh, the the GTI Pro Lite copy. Um, 
I found that much, 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 much more difficult to use. This seems to have a much more of a adjustability that the uh, <coughs> sorry that the GTI Pro Lite copy um, just doesn't have. But as I said before, I will do a I do a video of this against the the DV1, the genuine DV1, and we can see what that's like. And I'll do a video of of this uh, v the, the uh, GTI Pro Lite, the Chinese GTI Pro Lite. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching as always. If you are enjoying the videos uh, and you think listening to me is actually a bit of fun uh, and not torture, then maybe you could think about giving us uh, a subscription. Just helps with the uh, YouTube algorithms and helps uh, bump us up a bit. All right, then, guys, as I said, thanks for uh, watching as always, and you keep watching them and I'll keep them coming. Cheers. Bye bye.